this lecture, we're going to introduce the concept of the solar constant, which is referring to the amount of solar radiation that the Earth receives at the top of the atmosphere from the sun in terms of its irradiance in watts per meter squared. Measurements uh, from satellites uh, pointing back towards the sun that are in orbit of our planet have determined that the average solar constant, uh, the average amount of radiation that we receive from the sun is about 1,380 watts per meter squared. If you think about one square meter, and 1,380 watts per meter squared would be the equivalent of 14 100 watt light bulbs illuminating that area, uh, that one meter area, and that would be very, very bright. Uh, and that's referred to the top of the atmosphere, TOA. We'll use the uh, abbreviation TOA a lot in uh, atmospheric radiation. So the sun puts out this energy and it travels through space and gets to the Earth. Uh, and the amount of energy that we receive at the top of the atmosphere is impacted by the Earth-Sun distance uh, because as that energy is spreading out away from the sun, uh, the surface area of that sphere gets bigger and bigger as R gets larger. And so uh, by the time it gets to the Earth, um, if that distance changes between uh, seasons, uh, then we'll end up with a different amount of solar radiation uh, at the top of the Earth's atmosphere. So it's affected by the Earth-Sun distance, it's affected by the sunspot cycle. Uh, we know that the uh, solar output changes by about 0.1% over the lifetime of the sunspot cycle. Um, it's also possible that you could have interstellar dust between the Earth and the Sun that would absorb some of that solar radiation and prevent it from getting to the Earth. <coughs> so we know that the Sun is the center of our solar system and we know that the average distance between the Earth and the Sun is 1.5 times 10 to the 11th meters. But the Earth is in an eccentric orbit uh, we're actually closer to the sun uh, in the month of December than we are in the month of June. Uh, we refer to that as aphelion, uh, and it occurs during the northern hemisphere winter. And the distance from the sun in the northern hemisphere winter is 1.475 times 10 to the 11th meters. In the northern hemisphere summer, which is at perihelion, we're further away from the sun at 1.526 times 10 to the 11th meters. And what we want to figure out is how this eccentricity of the Earth's orbit uh, affects the amount of solar radiation that's received at the top of the Earth's atmosphere. The functional form basically says that the uh, amount of radiation, the irradiance uh, at a given distance away from the uh, object that's emitting the radiation is equal to the flux of radiation that was emitted by that object divided by the surface area of the sphere that has a radius equal to the distance of the object away from the emitter. So F is equal to E over 4 pi r squared. If we translate this into the Earth-Sun system to calculate the flux of the Sun, uh, we'll solve for E of the Sun. E of Sun is equal to 4 pi r squared, where r is the mean Earth-Sun distance, uh, times the measured flux at the top of the Earth's atmosphere, which in this case is our solar constant, S. Uh, so if you want to solve for the flux of the Sun, you'll get 4 pi times the mean Earth-Sun distance squared times the measured solar uh, constant at the top of the Earth's atmosphere, and that gives a flux of the Sun of 3.9 times 10 to the 26 watts, a really large number. But what we really want to know is how that flux, at, excuse me, how that irradiance at the top of the Earth's atmosphere uh, is different between aphelion and perihelion. And so if we use that equation, we have the flux of the sun divided by 4 pi uh, r1, which is the radius of the sphere uh, that uh, uh, goes through the Earth when the Earth is at aphelion, uh, divided by the flux of the sun divided by 4 pi r squared, uh, r2 squared. Uh, so the flux of the sun cancels out. We didn't actually have to do this calculation, but it was instructive nonetheless. Um, the four pi's cancel, and you'll end up with the ratio of the irradiance at aphelion to perihelion is equal to r2 squared over r1 squared. Plugging in those numbers, we'll end up with a ratio of 1.07. And what that means is that when the Earth is closer to the sun during the northern hemisphere winter, it actually is receiving 7% more solar radiation than when it's at perihelion 
when we're at uh, the Northern Hemisphere summer, when we're further away from the sun. And clearly, that's in the opposite direction of our seasons, and this is not an explanation for the seasons that we observe on our planet.